Hi everyone, my name is Tiffany. Welcome back or welcome if you've never been here before. Today I'm gonna do the Finally Fall book tag. I have seen this tag before on booktube and I'm so excited to do one now that I have a channel. Unfortunately the original video is no longer up so I am gonna link all the questions down below just in case someone else would like to do it and I will be referring to my phone. Mm. The first question is in fall the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. Hmm. I came prepared um, because I recently read Into the Heartless Woods by Joanna Ruthmayer and oh, first of all the writing in this is absolutely stunning and it follows a tree siren who falls in love with a boy whose head is in the clouds. His father's an astrologer and I just love that imagery of her being grounded and his head in the stars. And also I mean this is dark yet very heartwarming. It does give me Tim Burton vibes in that there's a lot of death and heavy themes, yet there's this innocence within their love and also within the characters. Our tree siren in this book, who remains nameless for the majority of it, basically is luring souls into the woods. It's incredibly atmospheric. All of the sounds, all of her POVs are very lyrical and um, it's haunting. And I just loved this romance. It's YA, there's no steam, and I still gave it five stars. I feel like that's saying something because it's usually a requirement to make it on its way to my shelves, but I absolutely love this. And I recently talked about this in my mid-month wrap-up, so I'm not sure if I went completely in, gave you too much, but um, it's there if you want to look at that. The next question is, nature is beautiful, but also is dying. Name a book that is beautifully written, but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. I'm definitely going with Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. That was an absolutely breathtaking read in the way in which she puts words to trauma. This is a well, the divorced couple, it's a second chance romance and they are co-parenting, they are co-owners of a thriving business and they are still dealing with the onslaught of trauma that just pummeled their family. And it felt as though at the beginning of this book, we're really in the aftermath of her healing. And oh, it was just absolutely beautiful. I also want to mention Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. This was absolutely gorgeous in terms of dealing with grief and loss, being that the heroine Macy lost her mother at a young age, yet was left with these beautiful letters that marked the milestones in her life and how her mother would have handled those situations. And so her father really holds those letters dear and follows them to the T to honor her memory. This is a friends to lovers and also second chance that took me by surprise and I absolutely loved it. I also think it's a great autumnal read. Like the cover is very misleading because there are some heavy topics up in here but I really enjoyed it so I gotta mention that for this. Next question. In order to keep warm, it's good to spend some time with the people we love. Name a fictional family, household, friend group that you'd like to be a part of. Ah! Of course I have multiples. Okay, so I would love to be a part of the Brown Sisters <laughs> familial unit. I absolutely love Talia Hibbert's Brown Sisters. They're incredibly mm, supportive, intrusive in the most loving way and absolutely hilarious. I love them so much. I would also just love to be within like the friend group of Juliet Cross's Savoie sisters from the Stay of Spell series. There's a beautiful found family scene in this book for Gareth. This is the fourth in the series. I am patiently awaiting the fifth. Okay, I cannot wait. I cannot wait, but we're talking about this right now. Rain it in. But they have these family dinners and I wish that I could just go to one of these family dinners. I love their dynamic. I love how they take people in over the course of all of the books and oh 
it would just be so much fun to be in Juliet Cross's French Quarter and like get to just hang out with them. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I love the Savoie sisters. And then yeah, I can't like forget about the night court. I mean, duh, the night court. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. I absolutely want to be a part of the night court. I mean, I feel like that's just like given. I have to mention that for this. Next question is, fall is back to school season. Share a nonfiction book that taught you something new. Mm. Now I will say, since I graduated college, which was only like 2020, okay? I graduated at a later age, okay? But since then, I have reveled in the ability to pick up whatever I want. That curriculum was a gauntlet. So although I'm a very self-actualized person, I'm a big advocate of therapy, meditation, I do not consume my knowledge for those things by way of reading. However, I have still maintained the habit of looking at like scholarly research. And I recently read a study that came out of the cell report. It was published fairly recently. I think this was like towards the end of August. And it is about, it's basically doppelganger research, like human lookalikes. They use an algorithm. The majority of us walking around have one. I have yet to look up mine. But what I liked about this study is what they basically found was that the likeness in terms of appearance is basically predicated on your genetics as opposed to DNA and also environment. And so I just find that really interesting how we can manipulate our genes by the way that we take care of ourselves. That's the biggest thing that I took away from it because I think the limitation within the study is the small sample size. I mean, it cannot be generalized as well as a few of the subjects within this study weren't actually present to give samples. They based the research off of just mere photographs. So I just find it interesting. Like again, I have not looked up my doppelganger. I'm a little nervous. I don't know if she's doing it better than me. Like. Maybe I should look her up because like I could probably glean some tips, but I don't even look like I did last year. So I just would be interested in seeing, okay, what she's like, because another part of the research that they found was that there were personality traits that were similar. Like what? But what I learned from that study and like what really inspired me was to continue on this path of doing everything I can to take care of myself so that I can have the best expression of my genes at the age that I am with the resources that I have at my disposal. That's very important to me. You know, within the last year, I have kind of really focused on my health and taking care of myself outside of sleeping when I should be, but you know, we can't be perfect. You can't change everything at once. But um, yeah, so it just kind of inspired me to continue doing that. So that's my like nonfiction bit. Not a book, but I do keep up with like molecular biology studies, also um, legislation that's centered around prostitution, just because I wanna like see how policies are different in you know the States as opposed to internationally. I just find it interesting, so. I put my name on a lot of different things and I still get emails. So, you know, I tap in and sometimes they're fun. Like the doppelganger research is really cool. Anyway, spent a lot of time on that. Next question is, the colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. Show us a pile of fall colored spines. Um, Let me prep what I have in front of me. I got red. Okay, let's do some green I think I have yeah the girl with the dragon tattoo Ooh, Gabriel Garcia green move into the yellow because this is like yeah I mean I feel like this is good right red greens and yellows you know little stack here it's cute next question is I apologize for booting you out, but editing me has realized that I missed a question, so I want to get to it here. The question 
which I'm excited about because I have two answers for this, is fall is the perfect time for storytelling by the fireside. Share a book wherein someone is telling a story. So I have to go with A Love Letter to Whiskey by Candy Steiner. I'm so excited to have this anniversary copy because it has Jamie's perspective. But this is a tumultuous, angsty ride between them. I absolutely loved it. And it is her telling her story by way of a letter, which I forgot about until the very last line in this book. It follows them from high school throughout their lives, a bunch of false starts. <sighs> Synchronicity misses them. And it's just such a beautiful read. I rated this five stars. Candy Steiner is becoming a, a new favorite to me. And I talked about this in my mid-month wrap up. Another read for this is A Dowry of Blood by S.D. Gibson. Oh, I mean, the prose in this book are absolutely stunning but she also tells a compelling story. You don't get lost in them. And it's not, you know, a big surprise that she's a poet. I was like, mm, that makes sense. This is about the Bride of Dracula. And this is her record of the abuse that she sustained. It's her last love letter to him. And it's her reason for why she had to kill him. I absolutely loved it. I think it validates trauma. I think it validates anyone who's been gaslit and been made to feel as though being abused is normal. I think it also validates that aha moment and it was heartbreaking, not a romance, but I absolutely loved it and this will be in my wrap up. So had to give you that and I will send you back to past me. <laughs> the nights are getting darker. Share a dark, creepy read. Mm, for that one, I'm definitely gonna go with Descent by Sam Mariano. This was definitely dark. And what made it very creepy for me was not only is like 75% of this non-consensual, there was this almost hope that the heroine was gonna be able to wiggle away and it never happens. Calvin is who Carter Mahoney would have been had he not met Zoe. And in this book, Calvin's employee has a beautiful girlfriend that he shows around at the Christmas party and he decides that she now is his. And the way that he sort of baits her into a trap where there is a trigger warning for sexual assault. And like I said, for a majority of this book, it is non-consensual. And the heroine in this book has some fight. She bucks and she balks against his coercion and his aim to corner her, yet she's never really able to wiggle free. And he's the type of hero that doesn't mind if she's broken as long as she remains in his clutches. And so just like reading her figure out that all roads are going to lead back to him was, you know, it was a little creepy, okay? Because I had some hope for the majority of the book until I was just like, we gotta accept it. But I will say one thing that I did enjoy about Calvin was that when he turns his power towards aiding her and like a big, you know, soul wound that has to do with her family, I really enjoyed that. But I mean, she was gonna be his whether she liked it or not, okay? Mm. Next question. <laughs> the days are getting colder. Name a short heartwarming read that could warm up somebody's cold and rainy day. I'm going with Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. I got this wreck from Riley Marie and I absolutely loved it. It is a fantasy about Viv who is an adventurer who's ready to hang it up and open a coffee shop. And that's just what she does. I love that it's a fantasy that's not about the quest. And it's about the rest. And I just love the found family aspect, how she's growing her business, all of the characters that we meet, all of the descriptions of the coffee and the food. I love that in this world, coffee is not well known. They know of tea, but coffee is more of a gnomish thing. And so she's bringing that into the community. And oh, 
There was just a lot of sweet, heartwarming moments in this, and it's a great autumn read. One preferably read with snacks, because you're going to want them <laughs> after reading this book, I am just saying. Next, I have fall. Luckily, it's my favorite season. Returns every year. Name an old favorite that you'd like to return to. I mean, surprise, surprise. I recently got a beautiful copy gifted to me by Carrie from Booked for Romance. And I will definitely be reading Sea of Ruin. This copy is absolutely stunting. I mean, she's are you kidding me? She's stunting on these hoes. Sorry. Um, I love this because I feel like it could be Pam Godwin on the cover. And so my hope is I'll probably end up wrapping my other copy up to read during um, my bookish advent calendar days. And so I'd like to listen to the audiobook Roxy Isles. I love the way in which she narrates this book. You're going to feel like you're sailing the freaking high seas. I would like to listen to her while just enjoying the beautiful artwork within this. Yet I also think I want to scrapbook annotate my other copy. So that should be a lot of fun and really involved. And I can't wait to do that. Ooh, I cannot wait to do that. This is one of my favorite books of all time and I've never really had a limited edition cover so I'm just so thankful to Carrie. It's absolutely gorgeous so I have to get into it. Also Pam Godwin has kind of got me on a rabbit hole. I mean speaking of research she recently celebrated her anniversary with her husband and actually got a real coin that is from the shipwreck that allows uh, Bennett to have her ship in this book. And so I'm just like here for it and I'll be looking more into that. So I definitely want to like scrapbook annotate that but Pam Godwin's Instagram has like been a lot of fun to follow lately. So oh, I'm just obsessed with that freaking book. It's so good. If you have not read Sea of Ruin and you think that you can handle the trigger warnings, this is a dark historical, let me think off the top of my head. Yeah, sexual assault is a big one, just to name one. Um, dubious consent as well. But if you think that you can handle that, I really feel like Bennett Sharp is someone that every woman should have on her shelves. I'm just saying get into it. It's such a good book. Okay, lastly, fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Share your cozy reading accessories. Okay, I'm a hoe for a theme and I really like to like create a vibe. So candles are a big thing <laughs> around the fall and um, in December for me. So Better Homes and Gardens. Oh, I love this candle. Okay, this is crisp fall leaves. And it just, hmm, oh, it's like apple and vanilla and wood scents. Oh my God. I love it so much. And I have a backup one too, because you know, if you run out, I have to keep it going. And then I also love these Yankee candles. <clears throat> this one is apple sweet and fig. And it just, <sighs> okay, if these were cuisines, Better Homes and Garden would be savory and this would just be sweet. This is like, I do smell the fig and the apple. Oh my God, and the cinnamon. It's just so good. And when you burn them together, oh, I'm just telling you, it's almost like having a good audiobook narrator. You know how like that can just elevate the rating? Setting the vibe can be everything. If I have these going in some Palo Santo, as well as having a seamed mug, my <laughs> Camp Crystal Lake mug is like reigning supreme up in here. It's my favorite. I've had it since last year. And then recently I have gotten, oh, I'm going to link her Instagram below because she's just freaking taking my money. Book to the bone. I love just themed mugs. Her freaking shop, Books Are Better Than Reality is so cute. I'm gonna be wearing her shirt in my October TBR that should be up the day after today. And I just love it. So like a themed cup, you know, even if it's just water, I love a blanket. I just wanna set the vibe. So I definitely have accessories. I definitely like to be in the mood and I'm a hoe for a theme. So I think that's all of the questions. <laughs> 
I had fun with this. I'm so happy that I finally get to do it on my channel. I want to thank you for joining me. Please consider subscribing and sticking around, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.